Hi, welcome to Impact Point Academy. I am Emmanuel Tobilova. In this YouTube channel, we are going to be providing you with educational content and material that can help young people grow and also help teenage people pass examinations successfully. So, we are going to be giving you amazing educational content. Hi, welcome to Impact Point Academy. I am Emmanuel Kudova. So in this lesson, we are going to be doing the 2015 economics question. So therefore, um, from the question shown, you would see that an hypothetical table was given where you were given your total fees cost and your total cost. So now let me replicate, let me replicate the table here, then we solve together. We have one. We have zero, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five, we have six, and we have seven. Meanwhile, this is the output from the table given in the question. Also, then we have uh, this is the cost, which is in dollars. Then we have, um, we have 20, we have 40, we have 60, we have 80. We have um, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, then 200. Now, looking at this, going back to the question, we're given that here at 40, forty is standing for the total fixed cost. Now, what is total fixed cost? Total fixed cost simply means that cost that doesn't change with the level of output. It doesn't change with the level of output. It is fixed in nature. What are the examples of total fixed cost? Or what are the examples of total cost? We have rent and the likes. So this cost does not change with the level of output. Then, here we have this. So, I'm going to do something so that it can be easy for you to identify those things before going to the question. So, I'm going to be doing this. Then, under 100, we have uh, this. Then, let's just make it balance. Then, uh, under 120, we have uh, 3. You will find out that in the question, this was not actually done, but for the sake of solving, I have to do this so that you can be able to trace out the solution. Then on a five, we have this. Then on a six, we have this. Then the last and not the least, which is seven, we have this. So now with this, you'll be able to trace out what it is. So starting from here, 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 here. So this is let's say let's call this um, an abridged version or a demodified version of uh, the question. So the question, the first question states that we are to calculate the variable cost as output for. So the first one is calculate the variable cost at output two, four, and uh, six. Now I know the first question you are asking now is what is variable cost? Variable cost simply means those costs that changes with the level of output. It means as production rate increases or as production rate decreases, those kind of costs also changes with the level of output, like cost of buying materials. And so, sometimes you get to the market, you see that some costs 
are high today, they are down tomorrow, probably because of one thing or the other. So these are variable costs. They vary and uh, the volume of what you want to produce determines the cost you are going to expend. So it varies with the level of output. How do you calculate variable cost? Very simple. Now, to calculate your, let's do some mathematical works here. Now, to calculate your total cost, to calculate total cost, it is usually total fees cost plus variable cost. Now, note this. This is the formula for calculating your total fees cost. But for this situation, we are asked to calculate your words, your variable cost. So to calculate your variable cost, very simple. You make VC, the, which is variable cost, the subject of the formula. Now, how do you make VC the subject of the formula? You are going to transfer VC to the other side where TC is. So you see, VC equals, then TC comes here, it's called what? TC minus TFC. Don't forget that your TFC simply means total fees cost. So this is the formula we are going to be using to calculate our variable cost. So now the question states that calculate the variable cost at output 2, 4, and 6. Now look at this. At this point, which is output 2, which is what? 100. So you say, Therefore, at output 2, variable cost at output 2, variable cost is now go back to this table, then begin to trace at output 2, the cost was how much? 100. So you say at output 2, recall. Don't forget to always recall this formula, which is uh, VC equals TC minus TFC. So we say now our VC, we don't know our VC yet, is that not vice, not vice chancellor now, but what? By variable cost. So we say 100 minus, don't forget that your value that you are dealing with matters. For the sake of Nigerian candidates, you are using uh, Naira. For the sake of Ghanaians, they are using cedis. So it depends. So this question now, you are given dollar as your cost. So we say VC. Now you come back to this question. In this question, your total fixed cost is fixed, which is 40. Remember I told you that total fixed cost is just that cost that doesn't change with the level of output. So we have what, 40. Therefore, we say VC equals what? This minus sum is what? 60, 60 dollars. So that is the first thing. That is for at output two, then output at output four. VC is now, What's that? Don't forget the formula again. Recall this formula. Then we have, you come back to this graph and trace again. What do we have? We have 140. So it's what? 140 minus 40. Therefore, our VC is what? Our VC is 100. Then the next one again, same approach as output 6 now. Then our variable cost, don't forget the formula. Then you come back to this. What is our T? What is our at our P6? What is it? We have what? 180. So you say 180 minus what? 40. Our VC equals what? 140. So now you've successfully calculated the Variable cost at output 2, output 4, then output 6. Now, I want you to know something that this is why I'm class standards. 
So uh, many times it is good to display to the examiner that you know what you're talking about. So how you calculated all this is, then you can now further say variable cost. So when I write VC, just know it's variable cost. Variable cost at output two equals uh, sixty dollars. Then out at output four equals hundred dollars. Then at output six equals one forty dollars. Do you know why? You've just summarized your answer. You've just summarized the whole thing you've done. So now, you've succeeded in calculating the variable cost. I'm sure you understand this. So what next you have to do is that you close your book, then do this again. So next, the next question asks us to calculate our average total cost. Our average total cost at what level? At level at output two and output three. At output two and output three. Now the question you should be asking now is what is average total cost? Average total cost simply means total cost per unit. Total cost per unit simply means that since uh, we have our TFC, we have our sorry, this is total cost. What average it is simply means for the average version of it simply means total cost divided by output. Total cost divided by output. Now you said the first one is find ATC at output. Now, what is output 2? Don't forget how I showed you to trace the other time, which is you trace back to this, which is 100. What is the output? Our output 2, the output is what? Uh, 2. So you say, recall, don't forget, always recall this. For now, this is your friend. So, recall. So now, find ATC at output 2. You just say ATC equals 100 divided by 2 therefore ATC mean okay dollars don't forget dollars your sign is very very important so ATC now equals what 50 dollars now to find ATC at output now we are finding ATC at output 3. Now you come back again. What is this? We have a 120 as our so we say ATC equals 120 divided by 3. Therefore, our ATC equals what 40 dollars. Don't forget how I told you that time. So you give a summary of what you've calculated now. Question 3. So, what is in question 3? In the question 3, we are asked to calculate the marginal cost. The marginal cost at output 4 and 6. I know the question you are asking now is what is marginal cost? Marginal cost simply means an additional cost used in production. An additional cost used in production. Now, let me give another example or another relatively example of marginal cost. Let's say, for example, you add three plates of rice. You add three plates of rice, but because the rice was or was so delicious and uh, you felt like eating another plate at that point at this point there's something in economics called the saturation point i think i need to explain this with the aid of um, a diagram now let's say this is your 
at this point, this is your saturation point. This is your saturation point. This is that point where you are filled. You've been filled, but because of because the food is something delicious, you wanted more. So at that point, you wanted to take another what extra plate. That fourth plate is your what marginal uh, marginal output or marginal intake. Let me put it that way. Marginal intake. Same thing with marginal cost. Additional cost that it requires or another cost that it requires for uh, production to take place. So now, well, by, the time, by the time you've taken the fourth plate, now when you take the fifth plate, you start vomiting. That is called marginal diminishing return. Marginal diminishing return. And I'm sure you should know <coughs> what the law of marginal diminishing return states. It states that as more and more, big, as more, and more a um, particular product is being consumed, uh, satisfaction will get to a point where there will be a decline in satisfaction. Why? Because as a result of the further intake of that particular product. So now, I've ex I have explained what marginal cost is. So we now want to calculate what, what is the marginal cost at output 4 and output 6. So the next question you need to ask yourself is how do we calculate the change or how do you calculate marginal cost? Very simple. You say MC equals change in TC over change in output. Now, in economics, this means change. So, this is change in TC over change in what? Output. Now, I, I know you are wondering how do I how do I put this? How do I calculate for this? Very simple. Look at this. MC equals to. Now, you are asked to calculate at what? At output 4 and output 6. So, how do you do that? You see, MC equals to total. This DTC means total cost. Total cost 4. Total cost 4 minus total cost 3 over. Output 4 minus output 1. Sorry, output 2. Now, for this case, so you now come here, you say MC equals not your normal MC, <laughs> MC here means marginal cost. So now, TC4 is what? 140. You say 140 minus what is total cost 3? You come again at total cost three. What do we have? We have what one twenty. You say what one twenty over four minus what minus sorry this will be three minus three. So therefore your MC equals what this one minus this one is what one fourteen minus one twenty is what twenty dollars divided by what one. Therefore, your MC is worth twenty dollars. Now, can you try? I'm giving you ten seconds to try the other one. Okay, so don't worry. By the time you are trying, let me keep solving. Then you need to check if your answer is in sync with what I have just solved. So now let me solve that. I know you've tried. So let me solve this. So at words. At six now, it will be what? MC, don't forget the formula. Always recall this guy. He's your best friend now. Recall this guy. So now MC equals what? TC6 minus what? T6 what? T6, T6 five. Don't forget, it's also, it's another way of writing it like this. So in case you see it, just say change in six, change in what? T6 minus change. T C C minus change minus change in C C five. It's still the same thing. But don't worry, let us stick to this we already know. So now we say change in word output C minus change uh, output words, then output words, output five. So MC 
equals to what is this? Six. Don't forget, I actually did this so that I can be able to trace whatever thing or whatever cost you want to use. So this is this. So we have what? 180 minus what's our T5? Total cost 5, which is what? 160. 160. Then is what? We have a 6 minus 5. Therefore, our MC equals this minus is what? 20. And what? We have what? 1 dollar. $20. So therefore, our MC equals what? $20. I'm sure you if you find out that this one and the first one, that's for output 6, then output 4, they are the same. That's the confirmation that you are right. So don't forget the technique I told you the other time. You now say marginal cost at 4 and 6 equals $20 and $20 respectively. $20 and $20 respectively. So we move to the second, we move to the next question, which is the last question. Now, the fourth question. They say, if the price of the firm is 40, then calculate the profit or loss when the following units are sold. So what are those units? So we have two units and four Unit is also add on, add on. So now the question is how do we calculate profit or loss? Very simple. To calculate your profit, it is TR minus TC. TR minus TC. Please note this formula. And in, in economics, you need to note that you can write your profit as a um, Sorry, can I profit as this? Then equals to C R minus C. So T R minus C. So this is it. Then also I'll, I'll show you how to write the symbol for writing those also. So the question is you are asking what is total revenue? Total revenue is the amount generated from sales. So how do you calculate the total amount generated from sales? Then you now see that price times, okay, to get your TR, which is the total revenue, say price times quantity. Price times quantity. So don't forget, I'll give you two formulas here. This is the first one. Why this is the second formula? Now, in the question we were given that the price is forty dollars, so you see, so to get that of okay, calculating for the this is profit while this is um, loss. This is profit while this is loss. So how do you now calculate that of profit or loss for? Output two or for unit two. So don't forget, you say TR to get the total revenue first because you need this to calculate your profit. You say price. What was the price given? Forty dollars. So you say forty times forty dollars. What was the unit given? Which was what two? Which is now your total revenue equals to what? 80 dollars. 80 dollars. The entire revenue was 80 dollars. So now recall. When I say recall, you also say recall with him. So recall. Now we are recalling the formula, which is we are recalling this guy, which is profit equals to what? TR minus what? TC. So we say. 
profit equals to, don't forget your TRA is what? 80 then times what? Sorry, minus. What's the TC at 2? So the TC at 2 is what? 100. So we say profit equals to what? Okay, since uh, we are not setting, we say profit or loss equals to what? 80 minus 100. Don't forget, dollar, dollar. So therefore, now, when looking at this, this is loss. When your total revenue is less than your total cost, it is loss. So we say the loss for this one will now be what? Um, minus 20. So we now say it is what? Loss. So the next one, which is what? Output 4. I would want you to try it, then you will send it to the you send it to the WhatsApp group so that we can confirm if you are right. So we'll go to the next question. Now, this is question two, and this is the breakdown. This is the breakdown, or this is the information given in the question earlier. So the first question you have to calculate, what you have to calculate is to calculate the disposable income. So what is disposable income? Disposable income simply means the amount of money or income left in the pocket of an household after the deduction of tax. Now, for example, let's say I have this as my income. Then, after the deduction of tax, let's say uh, let's say ten thousand naira was uh, deducted from my income. Then I have what nineteen thousand naira. So nineteen thousand naira is my what disposable. 90,000 naira is my what? Disposable income. So when they ask you what is disposable income, you just say disposable income is the amount left in the pocket of an household after the deduction of tax. So with that same idea, now you have to calculate this. The first thing is what is tax? Tax simply means a compulsory levy imposed on every citizen of a particular country. It is not as a result of what punishment but it is a mandate that will be fulfilled. So, tax is a compulsory payment on every individual in a country. Now, what is taxation? Taxation simply means the system of collecting tax. The system of collecting tax, why tax is the actual payment. So now, how do we calculate our disposable income? So, to calculate your disposable income, it is what? Income minus tax. Income minus tax. So this is how you calculate your disposable income. So the first one, how do we calculate this? I'm going to do two out of this, then you do the remaining two, then you send to the WhatsApp platform. So for doctor, how do we calculate disposable income? Don't forget that you need to calculate the tax rate first. You need to determine, okay, so this step one, to make it more simple. Step one, determine the tax using the tax rate. Step two, impute Now, what is the tax rate for doctor? The tax rate for doctor is 10%. So you see, yes, you see 10 over 100 times what? 8,000. Therefore, the tax rate for doctor is what? 800. Right? So, 800. That is it. Tax rate for doctor. So therefore, we ascertain that the tax rate for doctor is what. So doctor's tax equals to what? eight hundred. So how do we compute for doctor's uh, disposable income? It is simple. Don't forget. Recall this formula. 
So now y d equals to y minus t. So now equals to what is our income? Our doctor's income is what? 8,000. Then minus what? 800. Therefore, our disposable income equals what? So this one is what? 8, sorry, 7,200. So the first disposable income for doctor is what? 7,200. Get that now. So the next one, we do the same thing for nurse. So nurse is what? Either, sorry, for engineer. Don't forget, I'm doing two, then you will do the remaining two. So the end for engineer, it is what? The tax rate is what? 12% over what? 100 times what? Times uh, 700. So you get this off and you get this off. Then you have what? You have um, 840. Then, now, we know that engineers are like tax is now what? 840. So we say, to calculate, recall. So don't forget, for this to recall the bottom. So to calculate this now, we say what? We say yd equals, we have what? 7,000 minus what? 840. So that will give us what? 2,000, 6,160. Okay, so. Don't forget in dollars, something in dollars, in dollars, then in dollars. So this is 6,160. So don't forget to solve for this, then solve for this, then send the answer, then we'll look at it together. So we move to the second question, second part of this question. So, the big part of the question says, what system of taxation was in The answer is very simple. It is the regressive tax system. It is regressive tax system. Why is it regressive tax system? We have the progressive tax system, we have the regressive tax system, and we have the proportional tax system. So, the answer is regressive tax system. So, I'm going to explain in the other part of the question why the answer is a regressive tax system. The now said, give the reasons for the answer in two. The answer is very simple. The reason is because the there is an inverse relationship. There is an inverse there is a, there is an inverse relationship between uh, between the the income and the tax rate, the taxable income and the tax rate. So there is an inverse relationship between the taxable income. And the tax rate. So, what do they mean by inverse relationship? When you look at the doctor's income, when you look at the doctor's income, you will find out that his income was what? 8,000. When his income was $8,000, the tax rate was what? 10%. But when you get, when they go to the engineer part, the engineer part was what? $7,000 for the tax rate was increased. So, you, you will see that. As the income reduces, the tax rate increases. So, which means it was a regressive tax system. For progressive tax system, as the income really increases, the tax was also increases. So, that is progressive. Proportional is balanced. But because in this case, we have what a regressive tax system. Most of the time, this falls on poor people. So, that answers our question. And the last part of this question said, with the aid of diagram, Explain the system of taxation employed in two weeks. So, we'll be doing that. I will show you step by step on how to plot that graph. Then we are done with this question. Alright, so the question states that with the aid of diagram, we have to show the, uh, the effects in the diagram. So, now let's plot this graph. When you look at this income here, if we have what? So let's just join them, the outbound line. So we have this, then we have what? 
we have this also 15 percent then we have what this also then we have what this also then we can say comes comes down comes down comes down then you can just trace it down like this trace it like this trace it like this trace it like this then trace it Trace it this way. Trace it this way. So let us say this is 10. Now, when you look at this, there's a kind of, when you look at this analytically, it looks like the demand curve. Now, the demand curve, there's an inverse relationship or there's a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded and demand. That's why the demand curve is downward sloping. When they ask you in your objective question why is the demand curve downward sloping, it is simple because there is a negative relationship between the price and the quantity demanded. Don't forget the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. So let's say the higher the price, then the lower the quantity demanded. So there's what a negative relationship for for supply. The higher the price, the higher the quantity supply. So this kind of relationship is a positive relationship. So leveraging the experience of the high day of demand. So same thing I'm thinking here. So the the higher the income or uh, yes the higher the income the lower the lower the tax rates the higher the income the lower the tax rate. so there is an inverse relationship. So this is the graphical representation of what we have been done. So we move to the next question which are written questions. Thank you.